When life first appeared on Earth, the surface conditions were nothing like an idyllic paradise. The temperatures were like hell itself. The first settlers, however, evolved at ease in this environment. And today, three and a half billion years later, the environment in many regions continues to be almost as hostile as in those days. In the Antarctic, the temperatures occasionally drop to minus 80 degrees Celsius, while in the Sahara Desert, the thermometer can rise above 60 degrees Celsius in the shade. But these contrasting ecosystems have something in common. They shelter life, and their inhabitants have designed ventilators, condensers, heaters, and antifreezes, which in turn have inspired human inventions on several occasions. The Namib Desert, the first desert on Earth. It's difficult to imagine how any animal has chosen this place for its home. At certain times of the day, the temperature of the sand reaches the boiling point of water. And during the day, it's very dangerous to move around in this land. Exposure time to the sun is very critical. An error in calculation of just a few seconds can literally mean death. Without water or shade, and with barely any vegetation, this extreme landscape is not a place where you'll find many living beings. Or maybe you will. In a convertible, we enjoy a cool breeze thanks to speed, and these beetles find the best environment to refresh themselves with speed as well. It's not a coincidence that the fastest beetles in the world are found in this region. But not all the fauna travel through the dunes as fast. Others take things a bit slower. The oryx is a master at controlling its temperature and at saving liquids. Regarding the water it needs, the oryx normally extracts it by chewing on the few plants that survive here. Water as such is almost never available. Some years it doesn't rain at all. This year, the summer storms have given everyone a break. The rains have been a true luxury for the inhabitants. To keep its body from overheating, the oryx has a very thick coat of hair that insulates it from the outside, while its light color reflects the rays of sunlight. But there's still more to tell. Some mammals have developed the method of sweating to cool themselves. The sweat emerges onto the skin surface, and as it evaporates, the blood that circulates below the skin is cooled off. Just like drinking canteens covered with cloth, which we wet so that the water inside remains cool. This system can also help the oryx. Nonetheless, there's a problem. Sweating means losing large amounts of liquids, and liquids are not abundant in these areas. That's why the oryx, before sweating, sometimes prefers to let its body temperature rise 10 degrees Celsius above normal. Although this would be lethal for any other mammal, it doesn't affect the oryx's brain, thanks to the fact that the oryx amazingly ventilates its blood in its nose before it reaches the head. Just like the water in the radiator cools a car's motor. This surprising antelope can also act as a storage heater. It stores solar radiation during the day in order to consume it when the temperatures drop during the cold nights on the desert. This mechanism is very similar to what we use in our modern heating and lighting systems. 
It's all about taking advantage of solar energy by storing it for later use when needed. This beetle can also vary its body temperature, but for him, sweating is not an option. Its cuticle contains a pigment called melanin, which aside from giving him his black color, makes him completely impermeable. Thus it loses no water whatsoever. But this is still not enough, since the beetle must get water first. To do so, it climbs the dunes in search of a drink. And sometimes, magically, he gets one. The Nami borders on the Atlantic, and the ocean regularly leaves a gift behind in the morning, the mist from the sea. The water from the fog liquefies on its shell, since its body is still colder than the morning air. Like in the bathroom mirror after a hot shower, the drops of water run down its back and are channeled by special marks on the skin that carry the water to its mouth. This minuscule pocket condenser is able to absorb the environment's humidity. It literally squeezes the desert to the point that it makes the most of its life. Anyone who has observed the behavior of this insect could build a solar distiller to extract water and avoid dying of thirst in an emergency. Most of the machines designed by man to control water vapor are based on the same physical principle that the desert beetles are familiar with. Water in a gaseous state liquefies upon contact with a body that is colder than the air and condenses into drops on its surface. In any case, for man to cover all his liquid needs starting from just air is still considered science fiction. It's been hours since the sun rose and the sea mist has passed. The sun has been working hard and now the sand is literally burning hot. You'd have to be crazy to walk barefoot across it, or at least have good balance. This lizard of the Merolis genus has got it straight. If the heat surprises you while lying in wait for your prey, you have no other option but to exercise so that your feet don't get burned. But the prey doesn't appear, and the sand lizard seems to be on pins and needles. Today, the desert wins the game. The reptile gives up. Just a few centimeters below the sand, the temperature drops to a bearable level. After 11 o'clock in the morning, the sun leaves the desert's inhabitants with only one option they must disappear from the surface. The Earth acts as an insulator. It doesn't conduct heat, but maintains a stable, cool temperature for those who seek refuge inside. This is the wine cellar effect. There's a lack of light, but plenty of peace and quiet. 